Hello, welcome back again. So uh, today, uh, so in last class we were discussing about heterojunction. If you recall uh, about how to draw the band diagrams for heterojunctions, uh, p type, n type, and depending on the band alignment, I told you different kinds of band alignments are possible: straddling, staggered, broken, and how to draw the band diagrams. I told you some of the rules. Uh, most of the textbooks and the classes do not. Uh, focus much on how to draw heterojunction band diagram, but then so many devices depend on heterojunction, so it's useful to understand how to draw a heterojunction band diagrams, right? I told you today we shall start with a graded heterojunction. Uh, whatever we have done till now in terms of heterojunctions and heterostructures are actually uh, abrupt heterojunction. That means you have a gallium arsenide layer, for example, and then you have an indium phosphide layer or indium gallium phosphide or something, and you have an abrupt junction from one one material to another material within one atomic layer you abruptly change it that is called an abrupt heterojunction what we have studied till now. And this is possible such kind of a sharp interface and abrupt junctions are possible because of epitaxial techniques like MBE and MOCVD that I had discussed in last to last class that allows you to control the thickness of the deposited layers up to a precision of one atomic layer thereby allowing you to grow very sharp interfaces. And these are technological advancements in machineries and uh, you know uh, the vacuum science. So there is also a materials aspect to this. I will tell you that instead of abrupt junction sometimes it is useful to gradually change the band gap of a material from one point to another point as you grow or deposit the material. So for example I have a wafer of gallium ars arsenide and I am gradually increasing the aluminum fraction as I am increasing the aluminum fraction, I am trying to grow aluminum gallium arsenide gradually over a certain thickness that is called grading. So, let us come to the whiteboard again. What I am trying to say here is that you have gallium arsenide okay, with a band gap of 1.4 eV and you have suppose aluminum arsenide with a sorry aluminum arsenide with a band gap of 2.2 eV. If you make a heterojunction, it is abrupt. It is abrupt heterojunction like gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide or aluminum so you can say aluminum arsenide right. This is an abrupt heterojunction it is abruptly changing here but over what we can do instead is that we can actually grade it. When I grade it I change the what I mean by change is that I gradually change the composition I gradually change the composition okay. Instead of abruptly I gradually change the composition of say aluminum gallium arsenide. Okay, this is x, this is 1 by x, I slowly change x and because of this what happens is that there is a gradual change in various properties like say band gap, your band gap will gradually change now. Of course, your other things like maybe electron affinity, dielectric constant and other things also will change. The most important thing is that your um, band gap will actually change gradually and this has huge implications in practical devices that are used. Uh, for example, in white light LEDs, in your transistors that are going into your cell phones for RF transmission and receiving modules. Uh, those are made of indium phosphide gallium arsenide sort of hemp and HBTs that I will talk about. You use this gradual change in grading, it is actually used in commercial devices, so it is very important. So essentially what is happening is that you are taking say for example, uh, aluminum gallium arsenide where it is x and this is 1 minus x and you are gradually changing x practically when you are growing. So, suppose I have a layer of what is happening practically is that this is I have a layer of gallium arsenide. When I try to grow on top of this using a technique like MOCVD or MBE, the growth the growth parameters can be changed, the growth parameters can be tuned or tailored such that I gradually start increasing the aluminum fraction. Okay? I gradually start increasing the aluminum fraction. Maybe the aluminum source or aluminum precursor or whatever I am using, I can gradually increase it up. Practically what it means is that uh, maybe I can use the increase the temperature of the aluminum cell in MBE. So, more aluminum will start gradually coming. So, slowly and slowly as I keep growing up thickness, this is thickness ZX, this is thickness by the way. So, I will start increasing the aluminum composition. So, so suppose this is 100 nanometer. Suppose I am growing 100 nanometer thick layer and I am here at this interface. At this interface that is 0 percent aluminum, but I am gradually increasing the aluminum up to say 100 percent aluminum here. So, what is happening here is that throughout this. I am al aluminum percentage x is gradually increasing. The aluminum percentage x is gradually increasing, and that gradual increasing is essentially making sure that at this point your band gap is ga gallium arsenide band gap, but at this point your band gap is aluminum arsenide band gap, which is 2.2 eV. 
this is 1.4 EV. So, over this your band gap is gradually increasing. Okay, so, what is happening is that this is gas gallium arsenide which is 1.4 and suppose this is your aluminum gallium arsenide aluminum arsenide which is 2.2 EV your band gap is gradually changing. So, it is it is changing like this there is no abrupt heterojunction like this probably okay it is like changing like this okay let me use a different slide maybe. So, instead of having a band diagram like this okay I mean practically of course, if you have doping then it will look something like maybe like that it is a abrupt junction between say aluminum arsenide and gallium arsenide instead of that I will grade it over some distance. So, what will happen is that this is gallium arsenide suppose this is aluminum arsenide here okay this is this band gap. So, I will increase it gradually like this okay. So, there is no abrupt heterojunction this is called graded layer. So, your composition is increasing this way. So, your aluminum composition is increasing and your band gap also is increasing right this is your graded heterojunction and the when I say gradually when I say gradually you increase is gradually increasing right this gradual can be of many types you can grade it linearly this is linear grading you can grade it exponentially you can grade it logarithmically there are many grading schemes. So, this is a linear gradation in exponential gradation maybe you will have a band diagram that will look like this right like this right. So, the way you grade can also be changed and that has a lot of implications because you know if you remember you have a electric field is defined as the slope of the conduction band right. By the way this is for electrons actually for holes it will be the slope of the valence band and we always only write elect conduction band because the band gap typically has always been the same. We always historically have been taking the band gap as the same. So, if the band gap is the same then you know if there is a slope in the conduction band then the slope in the valence band also has to be the same because band gap is same. So, whether you take the slope here or you take slope there is the same. So, we take the slope of conduction band and I say that the slope the conduction band gives you the feel. So, instead of this structure for example, if I have a structure like uh, no in the same band gap if I have something like that same band gap okay same band gap E c minus e is the same then your field will be different and because the field is different your acceleration your the mass effective mass will experience different kinds of acceleration and the time taken to for the electrons to move from one point to another point depends a lot on how you are grading because the electric field changes. If you have a linear gradation like that okay then electric field is constant it will move this way. But it and this is I am talking about the same material by the way same material like silicon. Suppose I have a band I have a electric field that goes like I have, a, I have a conduction band that goes like this this is E c this is E v. In this case your uh, your conduction band is changing in exponential way then your d e x by d x also the field also will go exponentially here the field is going linearly right the field is can constant here the field is constant because the slope is constant here the slope is exponential. So, the field is also exponential field is also exponential right. So, an electron will take a different amount of time to go from this point to this point compared to here. So, depending on the way you are grading your field and hence your transport your time taken everything the speed of the transistor everything is affected. And the way you practically grade this this kind of thing is that when you increase the aluminum composition for example oh by the way this is not graded okay this is not graded this is only constant material. But with heterojunction you can actually grade it and make it even more more you have more flexibility. What I mean by that is that when you are grading linearly suppose you have something like this you know right sorry. So, this is aluminum arsenide for example, this is gallium arsenide and this is your grading lesion. Now, you might have another where this grading this is a field here this is a constant field. The field by the way you look very carefully in this region okay look very carefully. The field is the slope of the conduction band the conduction band has a different slope than the valence band. This was not possible in a silicon sort of a thing right here the, the slopes are different here opposite. An electron on this part will try to roll down this way okay. So, the field is pointing in this direction for the conduction band. On the other hand a hole here will try to roll down this side which means the field is in this direction. So, for electrons the field is in this direction and for holes the field is in this direction. 
So, the fields are pointing in different in opposite direction for electrons and holes this is something you will not see in a silicon or in a, in a non heterojunction device you see my point. Electrons are also going to the left holes are also trying to the go, going to the left that is not possible in normal heterojunction normal homo junction because if in a normal junction in normal uh, semi semi semiconductor like silicon if you have something like that the slopes have to be same electrons will go this way and holes will go that way they always go opposite they always go opposite because it is the same band gap right. Here you actually can here you actually can engineer the band such that electrons go this way holes go that way ok. You can also do the grading and this grading is done practically by changing the aluminum temperature or the aluminum flow flux like in the practical MBE tool you can do that actually. You can also have a grading such that the valence band is almost you know there is no feel here but all the things are dropping across the conduction band which means the slope here is 0, 0 which means the holes will not experience any field. That means holes will not move in drift will not drift because the valence band is flat but I am increasing the conduction band this side. So, electrons will move try to move side. So, I can selectively I can grade it such that I can selectively have drift of only one type of carrier, one type of carrier. I can make sure that grading is such that only the conduction band has a slope, the valence band remains flat. In which case, in which case electrons will experience a force, a holes will not experience a force. So, I can selectively have only electrons drift and holes not drift. I can selectively have only holes drift, but electrons not drift. I can selectively have such that electrons and holes drift in the same direction. I can also have a field such that electrons and holes drift in the opposite direction. This kind of flexibility gives enormous freedom to design new devices ok. And whenever you grade the band gap like this you grade the band gap either linearly exponentially logarithmically does not matter you have this this graded band gap like this this slope that is that comes up because of the change in band gap you see at every point at every point the band gap is changing and that change in band gap is because the aluminum composition is changing. Of course, when I say L gas, I can also talk about indium gallium phosphide, indium gallium nitride, some oxides, some antimonides, it is everywhere. I am just giving an example of L gas gas, ok, just an example. So, when I grade the band gap keeps changing at any point the band gap is x and the band gap keeps changing, right. This gives you a slope here as you know now know and that gives you a field either electron or hole it gives a field and that is called a quasi electric field, a quasi electric field because this field has come from the grading of the band gap and as you know this person you should google up everybody has a smartphone you can immediately google up this person Herbert Cromer ok. Herbert Cromer he got he, he is one of the pioneers or the fathers of this heterojunction and many of this concepts of grading and heterojunction and how it will benefit the devices in semiconductor laser or heterojunction bipolar transistors that are used in our cell phones now. He had done the theory and he had predicted he had proposed this long before MB and MOCVD instruments were advanced enough to enable practical demonstration of these devices much before that in 1960s and 70s he predicted all those based on theory and only in 1990s for example, MB and MOCVD machines have come become very advanced to allow this kind of grading and practically it is very difficult to do all these things. it is not very easy right you cannot just do band diagram on paper practically someone has to do it. So, Herbert Cromer uh, he got the Nobel prize in 2000 uh, the year 2000 in physics he is a, still a professor at UC Santa Barbara he was one of the pioneers of this and he, he used the term quasi electric field and by doing this quasi electric field because you can do it in any direction he called it you know you are able to teach the electrons he used to call this in his Nobel lecture teach teach electrons sorry teach electrons new tricks. So, you are essentially playing with electrons you are able to teach the electrons new tricks you can make the electrons and holes behave in a different way you know like they can go in different direction they can go in the same direction this kind of beautiful things are possible at heterojunction uh, that has enabled these devices. So, this is a grading of the heterojunction that you should be careful of uh, there is a lot of maths here of course, that I have skipped here very very uh, conveniently uh, there is a lot of maths in terms of how you uh, can actually uh, do this uh, this you know when you are changing here suppose you have a doping here right. For example, uh, you also have a this is suppose E f one semiconductor and this suppose you have uh, another semiconductor 
this is also n type this is also n type but you are grading this part you are grading then in grading you are changing the band gap but there is a potential that will change because of this band gap change but potentially also will change because of the depletion and other things so those two things you know mathematically you have to take into account so at any point x you can define the potential for example you can define the the you can define the band gap, the band con the conduction band, the valence band. So there are mathematics behind it which we are skipping here, but in general the qualitative picture should be clear to you now, right. So let us talk about one of the most uh, Im important or you know very useful devices that has exploited this heterojunction is called uh, a modulation, a modulation doped, a modulation doped field effect transistor, it is called modfed modulation doped field effect transistor or also the mobility is high in this kind of devices as we will see now it therefore it is called high electron mobility transistor these are very widely used in many high speed RF applications. You remember the silicon band diagram the silicon MOSFET that we have studied few classes back remember silicon MOSFET you have the you know this is EI this is EC this is EV and then this is your Fermi level, the Fermi level is like this, right. You create a very high density of electron gas here by inversion, there is an electron gas that forms here due to inversion, you remember that, right. There is an electron gas that forms here due to inversion, this is very high density of inter in electron gas, but it has a mobility only of 300 to 500 per centi centimeter square per whole second, that is a low enough mobility, do you know why? Because this electron gas coexists with this p type material, this is a p type material by the way. It is a p type material that has inverted, right. But this is a p type material that is there, and this interface, this interface is between a very high quality silicon, which is you know a very high quality silicon that is wafer, and an oxide which is silicon dioxide. This is not an epitaxial, this is not an epitaxial interface. This, that, that means the silicon oxide is not grown epitaxial, it is grown by thermal oxidation or other kind of approaches like LPCVD and all. So, this interface roughness scattering this interface, this interface of silicon silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide and silicon interface that is not a very very that is not an epitaxial interface that is not done in vacuum it is a thermal oxidation I mean the silicon wafer the, there is a gap between the silicon wafer being grown in bulk Zokralski method or something and also the silicon oxide being deposited. You have a huge interface roughness scattering, interface roughness scattering at this interface. Besides this is the background doping of p type there is always acceptor impurities there n a minus those are also affecting that mobility here that is why the mobility is low it is around 300 to 500 centimeter square per whole second this is bad. So, modulation dope field effect transistor uses heterojunction it uses heterojunction to make sure that number one uh, the, the main important thing is that the electron gas that forms this is not this will not form by inversion by the way ok. Electron gas that forms that forms will be physically separated from the impurity physically let me use a different slide. So, essentially what will happen is that you have a structure here you have suppose aluminum gallium arsenide and there is a fixed type of band diagram you have to use a fixed type of structure you cannot arbitrarily use indium phosphide on top of gallium arsenide or something it has to follow a rule there has to be a proper band diagram there has to be a proper stack you will not get otherwise. In this interface this is gallium arsenide by the way you would be able to get with proper band engineering a very high density of electron gas very close to the interface this is again the 2D electron gas the 2D electron gas which is of very high density this is of very high density 2D electron gas and that will be the best thing about here is that that is physically that is physically separated that is physically separated from impurities. The doping that you use will not be coexisting with the electron gas here that is why the scattering will be low no scattering almost by the impurity ok and hence your mobility will be mobility will be high ok. And besides this interface that interface is not an oxide semiconductor interface it is a semiconductor semiconductor interface that is an epitaxial interface that is grown in purely in vacuum and so the mobility the room temperature mobility could be up to 8000 centimeter square 
per volt second which is very high and this gives rise to very high speed devices which is not possible with silicon right very high speed devices that is not possible with silicon there are many variations over here but please be advised that you know it just cannot be any other heterostructure it has to be some fixed type of heterostructures so what happens in the structure is that i'll show you it's not just l gas gas uh, you know you will have to have what will happen is that the structure will look something like this okay actually i will uh, i will draw a structure here so the top will have n plus highly n plus doped gallium arsenide this is actually for making contact omic source and drain contact then you might have a doped uh, n doped aluminum gallium arsenide layer and then you have undoped gallium arsenide layer and your 2d electron gas will form here actually a very high density very close to the interface very very close like 2 3 nanometer from the interface what you do is that you put your source here so that it forms a very good contact to the n plus right it's n plus dope no you put your drain here very good contact and now you have to modulate the channel you cannot put the gate here by the way because the gate will leak in a field effect transistor the gate should not leak right you have to apply a gate no so what you do is that you etch away that region so what i mean is that you form the source then you etch away this part again you have this part this is gallium arsenide which is n plus okay and then your source and drain are here of course and your gate is here your gate is here and this is n minus this is not so highly doped so your gate metal will not be able to, it will not leak so much but this is n minus doped here so below the gate below the gate you will be able to turn on and off the channel by modulating okay on or off the channel by mod, by applying an appropriate gate voltage at zero gate voltage by the way you will always have some charge here so unlike silicon mosfet typically this is this is called depletion mode transistor this is called depletion mode transistor because you have to apply this is called depletion mode transistor this is because you have to apply you have to apply a negative voltage to pinch up the channel negative gate bias to pinch up the channel or to turn the channel off to turn the transistor off what i mean to say is that if you draw the id and vg then you have to apply a negative voltage here to turn up the channel okay maybe minus 2 volt or minus 3 volt or whatever okay depends on the charge you have to apply negative voltage to turn up the channel which means at zero voltage you actually have charge here by the way and that charge will conduct matlab if you keep this floating or if you apply zero voltage or if you keep this floating if you ground this and if you apply some voltage on the drain there will be large amount of current that will flow this way there will be large amount of current the gate is not off you have to apply negative voltage to turn up the channel okay and the way you are actually looking at the band diagram if you look at the band diagram along if you look at the band diagram along this direction along this if you look at the band diagram then what you have is that i will take a new slide maybe here uh, you know you have essentially if you look under the gate not under contact is fine that right? you only look under the gate this is n minus l gas and this is typically say 20 30 percent maybe aluminum 70 percent gallium and so on and this is undoped gallium uh, typically there will be a actually i did not draw in the previous slide there will be a thin layer here of aluminum gallium arsenide that is undoped very thin layer it is called spacer layer okay what i mean to say is that there will be a thin layer of undoped aluminum gallium arsenide of the same composition as this if it is 30 percent this also will be 30 percent okay this is aluminum gallium arsenide undoped and the 2d electron gas is actually formed at this interface of undoped aluminum gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide matlab this doped gallium arsenide and this uh, doped aluminum gallium arsenide sorry and this undoped gallium arsenide between them there is a thin layer of undoped aluminum gallium arsenide so that this background impurity of this will not be physically coexisting with the channel here so the band diagram if you draw the band diagram it will look like this is the fermi level okay this is the fermi level okay so what it will happen is that it will look like this okay okay this is the conduction band only the valence band also will have a mimic there so essentially this is the doped n minus aluminum gallium arsenide this layer on the top this layer is the undoped layer this part to very few nanometer maybe 5 10 nanometer this is the undoped aluminum gallium arsenide and this is gallium arsenide layer of course this is 
your delta AC which is a conduction band discontinuity. So, in a way if you have the, con from it, so if I draw a next slide here, so essentially what will happen is that this is your conduction, this is a Fermi level, okay. Uh, what will happen is that this is a conduction band, valence band also will look like that, sorry, it will exactly look like that, like that, okay. This is a Fermi level, okay. This is this part, this part is your n minus doped L gan, which means there is a moderate doping of L gan here, L gas here, sorry, L gas. This part, few nanometer, this is undoped, this is delta E v, this is delta E c, conduction band, and this is your conduction, this is your conduction band of the gallium arsenide. The Fermi level is actually above the conduction band here. So, this part has a high density of 2 d electron gas, okay. To the electron gas that has formed physically because from this layer there are donors no? there are donors here because you have doped it those donors will donate electrons those electrons will essentially fall here those electrons will fall here and create this electron gas here and that is how the Fermi level has gone below the conduction band or above the conduction band electrons have fall here from here but there is this layer this is called the spacer layer few nanometer the spacer layer makes sure that this electron gas this channel that is the channel by the way that carries current between source and drain the 2D electron gas. This channel is physically separated from this dopant layer, this is the dopant layer right. It is physically separated from the dopant layer. So, that in spacer will make sure that this will be separate from the donor the spacer layer. So, the scattering will be low, the scattering will be low which means the mobility will be very high okay. The mobility will be very high and so you, you call it high electron mobility transistor as I told you at room temperature you can possibly get 8000 volt centimeter square per volt second in a gallium arsenide L gas hemp or a mod fat. This is a beauty because you are actually having an epitaxial interface there is no interface roughness scattering we are negligible of that and your doping that is actually giving you the electrons they are physically away separated by a few nanometer spacer layer. So, they will donate the electrons here and a few nanometer spacer layer will make sure that the scattering that the channel charge is not coexisting with the dopant because this gallium arsenide is not anyways doped right. So, this is the basic structure of a gallium arsenide L gas high electron mobility transistor. Uh, what we will do is that we will end up the class here today for today. We have introduced many of the things that have been essential in compound semiconductor. Uh, we have discussed about heterojunction band diagram the graded heterojunction. I have introduced the concept of modulation doped FET how it is superior to silicon MOSFET in that the scattering is low and you get very high mobility. Uh, this is the band diagram that I had shown you in the previous slide, uh, the band diagram of L gas gas modulation doped transistor. I will tell you where it is used in the next class. I will also tell you about a few other types of this transistors that are used maybe in other material system like aluminum gallium nitride, gallium nitride. So, you will have a broad picture of this transistors that are there and when you are talking about the heterojunction transistors I might as well introduce you to in the next class or not introduce a recap HBT or heterojunction bipolar transistor which is a superior version of bi BJTs in that the emitter is a wide band gap material I told you during the BJT classes that with HBT when you have a wide band gap emitter you are going to get much higher gain okay. Uh, you overcome the many drawbacks of BJT by using HBT either an HBT or an, uh, an HAMT hemp of gallium arsenide indium phosphide systems are there in each of the smartphone that people use in the world today uh, that helps receive and transmit RF signals because all your information all your internet everything comes in RF and you have to process those right. So, those transistors are used for that if you do not use gallium arsenide indium phosphide uh, transistor in your cell phone then your smartphones batteries will be the size of a huge brick okay. It saves power actually so those are very essential in the present electronics and also in the next class we will discuss about a few optical devices how heterojunctions are used and from there we will transition to optical devices in the next to next lecture okay. So, thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you again.